welcome to Layers with Larry. I'm Larry. These are all my layers. These rocks represent a time period known as the Precambrian. As the name implies, it's the period before the Cambrian, which begins here with the Flathead Sandstone. Today we're going way, way, way back in time. Back to the beginning, the oldest rocks in Wyoming. Uh, they're known as the Precambrian rocks, or the Precambrian period. Uh, the Cambrian was the first age in which we start to see complicated life forms, as we'll see in a, a later video on trilobites. But this is a time before we have any hard-bodied creatures, no shells, they're all soft-bodied things. Um, there were complex creatures towards the end of the Precambrian, which ends about 570 million years ago, but it goes back as far as, well, pretty much the very earliest rocks ever found on Earth. Uh, the oldest rocks are about three and a half to four billion years old, and the Earth is only four and a half billion years old. So as soon as the Earth began to cool and we had hard rocks on the crust of the Earth and, and a few places on Earth where they've survived, um, we can study them. So here in Wyoming and here in Cody especially, we've got a very, very special spot that you've all driven past a million times if you live here, is if you go up to Shoshone Canyon, and before you get to the first tunnel, uh, Take a quick look off to your left, or if you can park somewhere and go look, you'll see a very interesting formation of rock that's been cut through by drills where they uh, put explosives in and they blew off part of the rock. So here's a picture of that. Kind of ignore those lines that you see that are vertical, but you see we've marked out a, a separation between the Precambrian rocks below and the first sedimentary rocks that formed on the Precambrian rocks in Cambrian time about 530 million years ago called the Flathead Sandstone. So the rocks below you'll see are kind of, some are orangish or reddish, some are kind of uh, bluish, uh, grayish, and they are very hard rocks. In fact, if you took a geology pick like this to some of that rock in the Precambrian and hit it with a hammer, you'd hear a very high pitched, very like hard sound, like you're hitting a piece of glass. The layer above is the first sedimentary rock on that Precambrian rock in Wyoming called the Flathead Sandstone. And it sounds kind of like this when you hit it. Very dull sound. And if I hit it really hard, it would break apart pretty easily, whereas this stuff in the Precambrian is very, very, very hard. That's why they built the dam where they did. They built it in the Precambrian rocks, which are super, super hard and act as a good anchor for the dam. You wouldn't want to put it in this stuff, the Flathead Sandstone, because it would just apart. So uh, we build mega structures like dams like that based on the geology in the area. So to really appreciate uh, what you saw in that last picture, uh, uh, those Precambrian rocks normally everywhere else in Wyoming, if you wanted to see them, you would have to dig a hole 17,000 feet deep <laughs> to reach them. Not very practical. Fortunately, when the Rocky Mountains were built, formed starting around 70 million years ago or so and, and going on especially into about 65 million years ago, the Rocky Mountains were thrust, a rock that was thrust up from deep, deep in the earth. In fact, the Rocky Mountains used to be almost 30,000 feet high. They've been mostly eroded down. But these rocks that you're seeing, these Precambrian rocks, if we take a look at a, a geologic map and a side view, we're going to see how Here's the arrows pointing to where that last picture we saw was taken. Those rocks have been thrust up at least three miles from where they used to be up into where we can see them today. So people come from all over the world actually just to look at that picture that you were seeing a moment ago. And it's very accessible. You can go up and check it out anytime you want. But 530 million years ago, this Precambrian rock uh, was pretty far down and had been being eroded for something like about 2 billion years. So these hard rocks that we see in there, the, um, the feldspars, the orange looking stuff. In fact, here's a, a little video of this guy showing you the, the crystals that you can see in that rock. Those crystals tell us that this rock was uh, magma when it first formed. It was molten rock deep in the earth and it slowly cooled. As magma cools, tiny crystals of different minerals can start to form. Typically, um, when magma forms or cools deep in the earth, it forms rocks called granite. Granite consists of three different minerals, 
probably learned this in middle school or in high school. Uh, quartz, which is usually whitish, feldspar, which is kind of orangish or reddish, and biotite or mica, which can be kind of black to kind of a, almost silvery looking shiny sort of surface. In fact, in this piece I showed you the video a moment ago, some of those flashes of light were coming from bits of mica. Uh, because these rocks in the Precambrian formation were formed very deep in the earth when they formed as the root of an ancient volcano, uh, volcano system that's long since gone. Um, and, and in fact, it was buried so deep in the earth that it underwent a lot of change. You've probably heard of metamorphic rocks versus sedimentary rocks versus um, igneous rocks. Well, granites are igneous. They're, they're born of fire, it's word, which is the word, what the word means. Um, but they also, when they're buried deep in the earth, can undergo so much heat and pressure that they get altered a little bit. And some of these darker colored rocks that are in that picture we saw a, a little while ago are called gneiss. It starts with a G, it's kind of weird, G-N-I-E-I-S-S. -S. We'll put a, a picture of the, of the word up. Um, nice, and in, and in some of that nice, you start to get uh, crystals of mica forming, which we saw uh, in, in a picture of, I think, this stone earlier. Um, so up there, there's a lot of nice schist. Well, there's a, a geology joke for you, one of the only ones geologists have. You can think about that one for a moment. Um, do we find any fossils in these rocks? No. Um, it's not that there weren't fossils around at that time. It, it just weren't around in this part of Wyoming at that time. In some parts of the earth, there are rocks two and a half billion, three billion years old, and they do contain fossils. They contain fossils of things like this. I mean, that's a pretty weird looking thing. Some of you may have found these over on the Bighorn Mountains on, uh, to the east of Cody. Uh, sometimes they can be found in the mountains. Sometimes they're found in the gravel deposits that uh, lie on the sides of the mountains up there. And what those represent are, are living things. Uh, they used to be alive. They're called, these, these are called stromatolites, and I've got examples of several of them here. Uh, they are from Wyoming, but they're not from the, the Precambrian period. But stromatolites did exist during the Precambrian period. They were formed by creatures that today we would classify as bacteria. Um, not the kind of bacteria that eat stuff, but the kind of bacteria that make their own food. They're called photosynthetic bacteria, or uh, blue-green algae is another name for them. Uh, they're not actually algae. Uh, algae is a more complicated life form we'll talk about later. But these things formed at the bottom of warm, shallow seas. And they, uh, these, the, the, the bottom of the warm, shallow seas is fine mud. Uh, and these creatures would live on the surface of that mud. And they would actually use their biochemistry to cement together the little grains of mud that they were living on so that they wouldn't move around so much. So most of them form flat sheets of this stuff. But these guys form, and, and we can see it today. In fact, there's a picture of, um, uh, in Sharks Bay, Australia, of living stromatolites. They, they have been around for three billion years, pretty much unchanged. Uh, those form by not just forming flat sheets on the bottom of the ocean, but instead, as they formed a flat sheet, new bacteria would grow on top of the old ones that had cemented together the grains of mud, uh, usually with calcium carbonate and they would start to form into mounds. And like the way a tree grows and adds a ring each year, these guys would add to their mound, and here's a close-up picture of it in a moment, where you can see these layers represent the various layers of the stromatolite as they built up over time. So life was very simple then. Uh, it stayed simple for a long, long time. We don't see complicated um, life forms that are related to us until the very beginning of the, the very end of the Precambrian into the uh, beginning of the Cambrian. Now, when you're out wandering around looking at rocks as you're hiking or exploring uh, the geology around Cody, uh, you, you see all kinds of different rocks, gray rocks, dark rocks, uh, a whole variation of things. Um, and I've often been asked by people, well, how do you identify what kind of rock it is when you're out there in the field? When, if I take some of this flathead sandstone or any of this Precambrian uh, crystalline rock, and I take a container of dilute hydrochloric acid, which is an important bit of equipment that all geologists and otherwise rock hunters carry around, a little magnifier, of course, to look at things close up, 
And if you find a rock like this sandstone and you wonder, well, what's holding these grains of sand together? Uh, in geology, we call that a cement. And different sedimentary rocks have different cements. The two main kinds are silica, which is the same chemically as glass. It's an atom of silicon and two atoms of oxygen joined together. Uh, it's very hard. Um, and if I put a drop of this on, it does not react at all because it is made of silica because it's quartz and it's cemented together with silica, which came later after groundwater brought minerals to this sand and cemented it together into sandstone. Likewise, these bits of feldspar and the gneiss and the granites, if you put the acid on them, no reaction. But there's a lot of limestone around here, and sometimes it's hard to discern limestone from other kinds of rocks, but if you carry around a little bit of this stuff, uh, and you do find a rock like this one is a, a much younger rock than these. This is from the Sundance Formation. It's about 145 million years old, and it's part of an ocean, and it's all full of seashells. Take my word for it. Uh, actually, I'll show you a close-up in a moment here with a little video of me putting a little bit of this acid. And I'll do that right now. And you can see the fizzing action. Uh, those bubbles are bubbles of carbon dioxide gas, and that's a result of the reaction between the acid and the calcium carbonate uh, or lime in the rock. That's why it's called limestone. So that'll be more important when we get to some of those later layers.